Welcome back to Better Than Before. Tony Richards here, you there. And we're talking about our leadership lesson for this week. And this week I thought I'd give you, uh, oh, the joys of email, right? And so 10 best productivity practices when dealing with your email inbox and how to keep it all swept and garnished and clean and organized. So let's go to these uh, top 10. Number one, keep your email as concise as possible. Look through your email and eliminate everything that does not add to your desired outcome. Yes, sometimes people write the way they talk and sometimes they talk way too much. And so in their email, they are transferring dialogue in their head that should be coming out of their mouth into the email to you. If you want your email read, and I think I, in this one of these uh, down the road here, I'm going to mention that most people only read the first paragraph. So you're better off keeping it short and sweet if you can. Tip number two, have an appropriate and if possible, actionable subject line. So the question you want to ask yourself is, does this subject line make you want to read this email before you send it? If they're supposed to do something, put that in your subject line, such as review this document or uh, whatever it is you would like for them to do with the email, right? So try to write a appropriate or possible actionable subject line. Number three, avoid vague subject lines. No one's going to read an email titled various stuff, miscellaneous items, or stuff for you. I mean, no, I mean, I'm probably going to tempted to delete that because it very much sounds like it's an email from Nigeria telling me I've just been contacted to have a bunch of money transferred to me or something. Number four, keep your email string on subject. If you have to discuss more than one subject, send more than one email. If the subject changes, start a new email. If you started out with my vacation plans in the subject line, and then four emails later, we're discussing part-time hours, don't keep it rolling under my vacation plans. This is going to make it really hard for you to find that email later on. Number five, write the email first before you fill in the to line. We almost want to put the person's name in first. It's, it's almost, uh, you know, you're compelled to put that recipient in there. But people have embarrassed themselves more than once by accidentally sending an email before it was edited and finished. So don't let hit send mean you hit when you meant to hit draft cause you uh, to lose your job. Number six. Do not rely on the high priority indicator, otherwise known as the red exclamation mark. What is important to you may not be important to other people, and they may resent the fact that you use the red exclamation mark as if you casually do not think that their stuff is important, so now they're going to shove it in your face. It's better to use a compelling subject line than the red exclamation mark. When I see that red exclamation mark, I'm like, Some, there's trouble. Trouble. Maybe I better not read that. Number uh, seven. If your email is short, you can put in the subject line EOM. This stands for end of message. And it lets them know they don't even have to open the email. <clears throat> Here's another one, at number eight. NRN. So when you write the email and you write the message, if you put NRN at the end, no reply necessary. This one, people are going to be silently thanking you all over creation for doing this because this eliminates all the thank yous and your welcomes and appreciates it and or the compulsion to say something in response. The reciprocation pressure is completely lifted. Love it because I hate it when I'm on a string of emails and everybody's thanking everybody. And now I've got 15 emails in my box that's a RE original message and it's all just thank yous. Number nine, in your email, list your action steps as soon as possible. Research shows that most people only read the first paragraph of your message, even if you have vital information. So don't bury your point at the end. Have you ever had somebody come up to you and they're either they 
they don't know anything about it or they only know 50% of it. And you're thinking, and you might even say, did you read my email? Because it was all in there. Number 10, and this is probably the most important one. So I, I broke my own rule and saved the, the best for last. For those of you who only listened to the first paragraph. Don't rely on email for urgent or important matters. Yes, you can send an email in just a few seconds, but that is no guarantee it will be read by your recipient in just a few seconds. And for God's sakes, don't send an email and call them in three minutes and ask them if you've got their, your email. If it's vitally urgent and important, use the phone and call for a conversation or get up out of your seat and go visit the person. Both of these are usually more helpful. Generally, email is for um, much longer text and dialogue, right? You're going to send a report or you're going to explain a complex problem or talk about an issue where the person can sit down and read it at their convenience. It's not for immediate reply. And if it's too complex of an issue, you probably need to talk about it. So those are 10 big best practices and email tips that I thought you might find helpful today. And if you have any that you think we should pass along to everybody on the program, you can send them to me, info, I-N-F-O, at clearvisiondevelopment.com, and I'd love to hear about it. Thank you for listening to Better Than Before with Tony Richards, a business leaders podcast powered by Clear Vision Development Group. For more resources from Tony, visit clearvisiondevelopment.com. Join us next time for another episode of Better Than Before with Tony Richards.